Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are gonna make a birthday card. I'm making a card for my sister, and um, I wanna make a slimline card, and I want it to look like a like a tall um, uh, like coffee cup that you would get at a cafe. And so what I'm gonna do is I wanna make it a slimline card. So I'm gonna make a template here, and I'm gonna make sure that this, I'll be able to cut this out of the slimline card. So um, I'm taking a piece of newsprint to use as my template because it's inexpensive. And I am just going to figure out about half the size of the slimline card. So that way, if I know, if I make this template, it will be, um, it'll work. I want it to be symmetrical. That's why I'm using this, uh, that's why I'm folding this paper in half. I guess I didn't need to fold it over that much. And I'm also going to need to make a lid for that. So I'm not going to want this any higher. Let's see, probably... Let's see, the full paper is about that high. So I'll probably want my cup to be maybe about that, that high and then have some room for the lid. All right, that's my thought. And let's get to it. I think I'll just grab a ruler. And by the way, we're not gonna use anything, we're not gonna use anything fancy. We're this is how I make a card, you know? If you're looking to, you know, use fancy things and spend a lot of money on supplies, this is not going to be the, um, the video for you. Now I want this to pretty much take an entire slimline card base, so I'm gonna cut this out and see how that looks. Cause I'm gonna make a template that I can trace onto my um, onto my cardstock. I'm using up a bunch of Joann's uh, Park Lane cardstock that I didn't really like that much. That's kind of a nice tall skinny cup. The reason I I um, the reason I am doing the making a template out of fold out of a folded piece of paper is because I want um, I want it to be symmetrical. Okay, so for the lid. Okay, now if I like the way this comes out, then I'll just save the template and and I will I will keep it. So yeah, I think that's gonna work. Oh nice tall cup of coffee. That's actually probably Oh, that's gonna work. I was thinking this might be too tall and skinny, but honestly, that's kind of cute. It's kind of funky, I think. So let me just see if I put this on here. I'm gonna probably put it up like that a little bit. Yeah, I think that'll work. I actually can make it a little bit bigger. I might make it a little bit bigger. And to get a nice, perfectly straight line, what I'm gonna do is use my paper trimmer. This is a um, a pretty thick cardstock, and I'm just using just a rotary trimmer, so I'll probably take a few passes to cut it. So let me put this in here. Let me zoom out a little bit. I know, isn't this weird? Isn't this a random, <laughs> random type of video? All right, so I'm gonna want to. I want it a little bit bigger, so I'm just gonna bring push that template out a little bit. Now you may even you might even have like a um, oh you know what I really want this to be bigger because I'm going to want to put a gift card in here. And the reason I want to the reason I did the tapering I just want it to be symmetrical. So I want to make sure that when I cut this angle I'm cutting it. There, that'll work, I think. So you're probably thinking, where'd you make that? You could have just cut that. There we go. And then when I cut the top and the bottom. I'll just make sure that I keep that angle there. I probably could attack that on with a little bit of tape, but I don't know. This is not solid core cardstock, so it may tear the um It might tear like the um, the top layer of the cardstock, so I don't want to do that. 
this is basically so I can get my angles. Uh, anybody still here? <laughs> you totally bored out of your mind yet? Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. I'm going to stop apologizing for my nonsense. Hey, watch it, don't watch it. You do you, friends, you do you. There we go. That wasn't too bad. I'm working up a sweat here. There we go. So now we've got our little mug. That, why does that not look so... Oh, that's fine. I was just thinking it didn't look very very tapery, but I think it's just because I was holding it. It's not really tapered more on that side. How the heck did I do that? I used my template. Huh. No, I think it's fine. It's a card. It's going to, you know, it's not going to last forever. It doesn't have to. Maybe I do need to... Yeah, I think I just need to shave off just a little bit there. I can do it with scissors. Just need to taper that up a little bit. If you have a pair of long bladed scissors, it's even better because it's easier to get those long straight lines. Now let's have a gander. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so where's our little lid? Now I'll probably, the lid will actually probably be just about right because I'll nestle it down a little bit lower. I'm going to um, I'm going to do a uh, I'm gonna do that on a white cardstock, and I want to do a little wrap. Now, where do I want the wrap to be? Let me trace this again. I'm gonna trace this my card base now. And then we'll see. Now, where would a wrap typically fall? Probably like. Maybe right about here. And then I can cut that out of another paper. Now I'm debating whether I want to do craft paper or I've got some cute like uh, donut-y themed paper. I'm also going to use something inside for a little pocket for a gift card. But and hopefully, yeah, a gift card should fit in here, no problem. So I'm going to cut out this little template. I want to curve it. In which way do I want to curve? I'm not going to curve it because I didn't curve the uh I didn't curve the lid so I'm not gonna curve this all right so I need to cut this out of craft I think I'll cut this out of craft that's simple everybody has craft cardstock um and I'll cut this out of white and we'll be right back in a minute all right I'm just gonna trace this guy down here oh actually do a little bit of a curve to it um, let me use a gray pencil for this. That way, whatever is left behind will actually match. I'm going to do just some very simple coloring, just like shading with, um, with a couple markers. Cause I did have that actually slightly tapered and I think that looks nice. So, so we'll do that. And I also want to do a little bit of stamping, um, but I'll do that in a minute. We don't have to do that quite yet. Um, and then I'm going to trace this wrapper, but I'm going to trace, trace the wrapper larger um, because I'm going to crimp it. So actually, you know what? I'm just going to hold this. And my tapering looks kind of strange. It looks a little bit off, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger to account for the, the amount I'm going to lose when I crimp it. That doesn't look quite right, does it? It doesn't, but let's see what happens when I crimp it. Do you have any of these in your stash? They're kind of fun, aren't they? I haven't used them in ages. Oh, it goes in this way. Yeah, clearly I haven't used it in ages. I don't even know which way it goes in. Yeah, I don't think you have to be too particular with these either because... I'll crank it back the other way just so I can... Let's see how that works. I might need to trim it up a little bit, but I'll trim it. I guess you don't need to. You don't need to um, to trim it too much. I'm not going to glue that down yet because I do want to do some stamping. 
on there. I think I will just do my coloring here. So this is a cool gray, 40%. These are the Blick Studio markers. I really like them. However, I will say that like their reinkers have gone, gone up. Like they've almost, I'd say they've, they've gone up about 40% in price. So I'm not too keen on that. It's like as soon as Copic made their, their refills smaller, um, Blick decided to up the prices on theirs, so that, that kind of disappointed me because that's one of the reasons, well, no, I actually bought my Blick markers before they came out with refills, but I mean, that's one of the reasons I recommended them to people because they have refills and the refills were cheaper than Copics, and I guess technically they are still cheaper than Copics, but that's not saying much because Copics are, Copic refills have gotten very expensive. This is a 10%. I think I'm going to buy a reinker of the cool gray 90% and just dilute it with um, with uh, blending solution because yeah they used to be like four bucks to get a 25 cc thing of reinker and now it's like seven dollars so that's a pretty significant increase in just like a couple of years now I can be real sloppy when I color because I'm going to be cutting that out so I use a chisel edge if I want a little bit more, uh, a little crisper. Definition. There, I think that looks pretty good. And I did uh, dig up my long handled scissors. Just a little bit easier to, to cut out templates and things like that. Now I could, um, if I really love this template, if I feel like I'm going to make this card a few more times, I could um, cut it out of cardstock. It'd just be a little easier to trace. Like it's kind of hard to trace the uh, the newsprint because it's so thin. All right. So it's going to go like that. And like that. So I want to put like a little seal on there. And actually I have this cute stamp from uh it's sadly it's discontinued and the company isn't even around anymore. But it's really cute and it's like a little like uh you can use it. I use it on like coffee and cocoa cards. I've used this so many times. It's such a cute stamp. Um this is what it looks like. Isn't that adorable? I'm going to stamp that on some of this white paper using some green ink and I love having these newsprint pads for like it's just the perfect amount of cushion under your stamps especially if you're like me and you use a lot of unmounted stamps and stamps without cushion like if, sometimes I buy a sheet of red rubber and then just um, put Aileen's tack it over and over on the back and it just works really well this is just a dye ink here and hopefully that's inked up well oh my gosh I'm gonna flip it over that uh, ink pad is super juicy and kind of messy. So the thing with dye ink, give it time to transfer from your rubber stamp onto the paper. I see people rushing that a lot or like, like you know, basically um, crushing the stamp, but you just need to give it time and you should have a pretty good impression. Like that's a pretty good impression. So the next thing I want to do is actually put a tone on tone pattern onto the coffee, um, onto the front of the coffee card. I think that would be really pretty. And I grabbed a few stamps that I think would work. Um, I've got this one that is coffee mugs. Well, you know, that's kind of, I don't know if that's too obvious. I think that's kind of cute. That's a Techniques Junkies stamp. Um, I mean, that would be cute. It would be definitely very on the theme. And then I have this all over kind of cherry blossom. I really like this one because this looks really modern, kind of like something you might see on a Starbucks cup. And, I, and same with that. So I'm thinking one of these two and actually, I think I'm going to go for this one because I think this just looks really fun and modern. Now because it's not big enough to cover the whole card, I'm just going to figure out about where I want to put that sleeve and just make sure that I'm kind of like, I'm just dividing where I stamp in half in case I don't line it up very well. It's um, it's not going to be a big deal. A certain stamps are easier to repeat because they're kind of more of an organic pattern, but where this is very geometric, I think it would be tough to kind of repeat that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab my a larger stamp mount for that. I'll just grab this right here. I love this stamp mount. This is my Fiskars stamp press. And um press that on there really well. Uh quite inexpensive, especially if you're comparing it to like a Misty or something like that. 
Um, and I find it to be very versatile. I like it a lot. I don't know if that stamp pad is still made. That's by Vivid. Or Vivid is the, is the name. I don't think this has a direction to it, really. I think you can go in any direction. And this you could actually, if you had one of those um, those things, those Chucky tools that they use over stamps in a Misty, you could use that with this. I'm just going to flip that around. This ink is super juicy, so I'm definitely giving this uh, plenty of time to dry. I don't need to ink up the whole thing because I don't need that much of the stamp. Even on an even surface, like about one of those uh, sponges off the pad there, it's still going to be fine. Okay. Hey, I lined that up pretty good, actually. I'm kind of proud of myself. Oh, of course, then I flipped it over upside down. Hopefully I didn't smear it. Now, this is a, um, this cardstock isn't glossy, but it does feel like it has a little bit of a coating on it. So I'm going to let that dry. While that's drying, I'm going to go back to this and just fussy cut this out. And I want to leave a border. Yes, I could do this with my scanning cut, but since it's one thing, uh, it would take me longer to dig out, you know, to turn on the scanning cup, put this on a mat, scan it, load it, you know. So if I wanted to make like five of these cards, yeah, I totally would just uh, pop that in the scanning cut and do it because the scanning cut does do a little bit better job than I can do by hand. But I'm certainly not going to get any better if I don't, don't practice, right? Um, so that's kind of like how I'll determine whether I'm going to cut something out by hand or I'm going to gonna use a skin and cut. Of course, you could trace your pattern too. You Like if you had a pattern you knew you wanted to make five cards, I could just go ahead and trace all the card bases out. I could do all of that. But man, it's just, I think, you got to go case by case. Sometimes it's just a lot easier just to do stuff by hand. And if you don't have skin and cut, then you don't, you know, you might feel left out if, uh, if you think everybody else is using one and you don't have one. Oh, that's kind of cute. Let's do one a little bit. That's cute. This is gonna be a really cute slimline card. I'm gonna trim that down a little bit once I, uh, after I, after I adhere it. I'm gonna put that right on top. Oh, I think that's really darling. I really do. That's cute. Okay, and if you want to add some more color to that, you can. But I think I'm gonna leave it pretty plain. The thing I love about this is that it's very, um, it's not overly feminine. It's not overly masculine. It's just, I think, just kind of a nice design. All right, I did hit that with a heat tool just to make sure that was nice and dry. And I grabbed my adhesives for this project. I've got a double-sided tape, which I'm gonna use here for the lid. I'm just gonna do a good, a nice uh, strip along the bottom here. Actually, I did two just to make sure. Um, now the top of the lid is gonna protrude out a little bit because otherwise we'll see green. So I just wanna make sure that's fairly centered. You can look at it from the back too. Yeah, it looks fine. All right, then this I'm going to use foam tape for. It will help adhere it where it's so um, corrugated there, where it's it doesn't have as much surface area. That's a little too long. I like to tear this rather than cut it with my scissors because it is very sticky and the adhesive gets um, it gets on your scissors and it's kind of a pain in the butt to remove. Try not to get too close to the edge so when I trim it, it's not a big deal. Now here, if your thing looks a little wonky, maybe it got a little lopsided when you cut it, maybe it got a little um, lopsided when it got crimped. In any event, it doesn't matter, you can fix it. You could even just have a strip of brown, really. You could have like a, any, any like just a, you know, a two inch wide, inch and a half wide strip of cardstock and just trim it once you get it on the card too, so. I mean, don't make it, don't make it too complicated, guys. Let's put that right there, I like that. And then I am just going to flip it over and use my scissors to trim, trim it flush. See how those longer handle scissors just come in handy for that? These are just office supply scissors. I actually got these, these were very inexpensive um, at Martin's and it was, back at the time I was, I had my studio, so I was teaching classes, so I bought a ton of those. And they've been very handy over the years. Of course, could I put my hands on all those scissors? No, I have no idea what became to what became of most of them. But, uh, but anyway, 
They're around. There's quite a few around. I'm sure there's at least one pair in the junk drawer. This looks like where they joined a couple rolls. Oops. Oh, I thought that was disconnected, but maybe not. I always get very awkward when I'm doing adhesive. My apologies. I didn't want to edit this one because all my recent um, ones had been voiced over and I and I had a lot of people mention that they prefer the kind of more chatty conversational card making. So I thought that'd be fun, especially this isn't going to be too complex. Oh my gosh. Can I get the adhesive off of this? Make sure that's why you got to make sure your stamping is dry because if you have to gum around with this for too long, you were going to smear it if it was wet at all. And there, I mean, it's simple, but I think it's adorable and it's going to go in like your regular business envelope. By the way, top tip, if you craft in your basement uh, or anywhere in the world, it's got humidity. So if you're not crafting in the desert, get the, the business envelopes that have the peel away strip because the ones that you have to, that have like the gummed um, flap that you have to lick, those will seal shut on you sometimes. I have a whole box of just sealed shut envelopes because, you know, I wanted to save, I don't know, I wanted like a pack of 40 for a dollar versus a pack of 30 for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. I'm like, well, I'll get the pack of 40, but those all closed up on me. So anyway, buyer beware. Um, this is, I love paper like this because you got all these different little um, things you can use on scrapbook pages or cards or whatnot. And I'm going to use this donut one here because I'm giving my sister a gift card to Dunkin' Donuts, which is her preferred um, coffee place. I'm a Starbucks girl myself. Um, but I thought that would be cute because it's got donuts on it. She eats donuts occasionally where I don't do not. I'm only there. I only go for the coffee and I don't know. I've just never been a huge, uh, huge fan of Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I'm going to move this up. I'm going to see how far up that could go and still fit in the pocket. Now the reason I'm doing this is because um, I want this to be able to be used and reused. So what I'm going to do is actually cut, do I want to do sprinkles or do I want to do donuts? Um, I'm going to make myself a little pocket here. I'm going to draw, I'm just going to trace the bottom of this card And I'll just use this gray. And I'll just cut off the color pencil. But that's about how high I want it. So I'll be able to stick a gift card in there. And then I um, can stick this note on there. The note will be like, happy birthday. And then um, she can reuse that if she has, you know, she wants to give a gift card to somebody. I try to be mindful of that because, hey, I'm using foam tape in this. That stuff's not going to degrade very easily. It's nice to be able to get a couple of uses out of something. You really can go a little bit higher that pocket and bring it up to across that row of donuts. And then when I put this pocket in, I'll just make sure that my adhesive doesn't go like that, that it kind of blocks off at the bottom a bit. So, um, so that when I put the gift card in there, it won't get lost. It'll kind of peek out a little bit. So that's, that's my thought on that. Let me see if that's going to fit. I'm going to trim a little bit more off, but I'll do that after I adhere it. So I'm going to try to get as close to the edge as I can because the gift card actually, what are they, about two and a half inches wide? I'm not going to have too much extra room for that. I might not even need to block it too low. Anyway, but I'm going to start my adhesive there just so that it can't get lost. Do you remember back in the day when it used to be gift certificates and not gift cards and you go into a, you know, you go to a store or a restaurant and you get like a paper gift certificate instead of a gift card? I guess it probably was not long ago. Some places still do that, especially like small town restaurants. I used to remember we used to do gift certificates in my business. For art classes and stuff. All right, I'm just going to trim the excess from the back as best as I can, and then I'm going to taper this little card here. I'm just going to eyeball it. You know what? Let's just the donut symmetrical. I'm just going to. Tape it like 
straight scissors, man. Oh, you know what else I can do? I can just take this over here and I can trace it or I can at least make a make a mark of where I started. So it will be symmetrical. All about the symmetry, right? And then that will go in there for our little birthday wish. Oh, you know what that fit? Oh yeah, that's, that's going to be fine. And then the gift card will nestle down a little bit lower. And there is the lovely little cafe gift card holder. Voila, maybe I'll make a nicer envelope. But anyway, there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this quick and easy card making tutorial and I hope you give it a try today. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.